Shall we get started? So just a quick welcome to everyone who is joining us today. Um, we'll hopefully have a couple more people join us in the next couple of minutes. We are um, happy to continue our webinar series in lieu of in-person meetings, um, but we're trying to address topics that are going to be of interest to um, to all the people and businesses that are going through uh, through a difficult time and a changing time right now um, over the last the next the next couple of months and the and the current time. So, we just a couple technical issues. Um, everybody is muted automatically. Please keep yourself muted throughout the presentation. What we're going to do while Laurent is presenting is we will take. You can send your questions if you have a burning question. You can send it by chat. And at the end of his presentation, I'll start by reading the chat questions. And then after that, we can open it up and you can open your mics and ask him questions directly and we'll open the discussion a little bit more. This session is being recorded. The recording will be available on our website after the session by probably by the end of the day today or tomorrow morning. We will also send everyone a PDF copy of the presentation. If you don't know how to do this and you want to not see everybody who's on this call, just go to uh, Laurent Chevreau's image on your screen. To the top right of, of his image, you'll see three little dots. Pull that down and hit pin video. After you pin the video, you can go to the top where you'll see uh, his presentation and you can switch the presentation and the photo. And then once you've done that, you should only see the presentation and his photo and not see anybody else. Um, if for some reason we could get disconnected, which we certainly hope we don't, you should be able to come right back in on the, using the same link. Um, hopefully that won't happen, but you never know, uh, just to be prepared for, for anything. So thank you all for being here. I'm going to turn it over to Laurent Chevreau, Account Executive Lead at, at Alliant, to talk to us about insurance issues during COVID-19, what is covered and what is not. Thank you very much for being here. Well, thank you everybody for attending this webinar. and. Uh, Certainly, thank you for the French American Chamber of Commerce of Chicago to organize it. Certainly, this is the new way uh, for a lot of us to keep ourselves informed and networking. So the topic today is uh, one that uh, obviously uh, has some importance. Uh, insurance is always the uh, necessary evil. Go ahead, I've done that for 30 years, so I, I have broad shoulder to, to take it. Uh, but right now, the questions are coming right and left. And uh, we all follow uh, the, the news. It's getting really, really political. Um, so the title is very self-explanatory. And let's dig right in. Uh, the idea is to uh, have a presentation that is going to also take you to uh, the different part of insurance, a uh, common insurance program for a business owner, um, a larger business, or a service provider. We'll try to do a 25 minutes presentation and then open up for, uh, for your question. So um, uh, quick rem uh, refresher, insurance is really, for most of you, uh, about property, about liability, and about your people. And certainly it's uh, almost in the other way that I should have put it because people are more important than anything else right now. They are the one who made this economy uh, still going on. But I'll take this approach because over the last two to three weeks, um, it, it has been the center of the focus on property and certainly the words like business interruption, business income. What am I doing? I'm not collecting any, any fund. Uh, I've been coming again and again throughout my day. So let's dig in these three parts and uh, uh, use uh, that to refresh a little bit of your memory. In property coverage, there is a basis for the coverage that is very important for you to keep in mind. I'm gonna read it. It's a permanent direct physical damage to a covered property by a covered cause of loss. Simple sentence, as my little disclaimer says, it's gonna vary by insurance company, by policy, but this one is kind of the most common and encompass all the different parts. You'll notice that two uh, sections of this sentence are, uh, is underlined. These are, are what is defined. So the crazy part is the larger part of the sentence a permanent, direct, physical damage are not defined terms usually in an insurance policy, which means for my friends uh, uh, in the legal uh, service lawyers uh, who are attending, it's gonna open a lot of uh, back and forth questions. Let's, let's deal uh, with the, the underlying uh, parts. Covered property, that's the easy part. 
building stores, machine inventory tool. When you talk to Yan Shan's people about covering your properties, you are co covering your stuff, whatever it is that produce and generate uh, revenue for you, whether it's inside or whether it's the actual property. Um, covered cause of loss, this is a little bit more difficult and that's why you need a guy like me. Uh, and I'm gonna take you a little bit in history for that. Covered cause of loss is about what happened to these properties and insurance company have never been here to insure everything, the uh, all risk policy that has never really existed. Um, and I'm taking you back in history. The first policies uh, that we can uh, find uh, material of are actually issued by the Lords of London. And you can see it wasn't a result, and you, you can see Big Ben there, as the big London fire in 1666. And it took them 20 years to find out how to draft a contract that would tell someone, I'm gonna insure you, not for everything. It was on a, a single cause of loss, fire. And uh, that was the uh, first policy. It took, uh, you can see USA uh, almost a century to start writing their own policy. And I'm mentioning a big uh, improvement that have been done in the insurance industry in America by mentioning the Chicago fire in 1871 or the San Francisco earthquake that has brought uh, some earthquake insurance in the front line. Um, so really keep that in mind that uh, uh, insurance uh, policies have been a, a step up uh, in terms of uh, fighting uh, the risk that uh, are hit, um, hit uh, business owners. The, the next uh, step has been uh, policies called name payroll. We were actually listing, we started with fire, but we were listing what was covered. Windstorm, hail, an aircraft falling from the sky, riot or vandalism and more and more this policy became um, a long laundry list of cause of loss so things were flipped over and finally comes the policy that you probably have today we call them special form policy the logic there is we're going to say coverage apply to loss from all causes except those who are specifically listed as excluded and you are probably dealing with a policy like that today so again Let's go back to the sentence before I flip. A permanent direct physical damage is a restaurant's touch by COVID-19 has a permanent direct physical damage. And the big question is, is it hit by a covered cause of loss? And um, unfortunately, the most common excluded cause of loss have been tied to um, big, big facts that happened that the insurance company could not cope with. And you can find in your policy your own words. I'm giving you some right now. Contamination, and you can see the definition include virus and disease causing or illness causing agent. Uh, sounds like COVID-19, no? The big little uh, uh, cell that I'm showing there. But your policy may talk about contaminants. The definition will probably be quite the same. Or drill into disease, fungus, or actually the word virus. So the question is, what about pandemic? Ah, this is a word that we've been uh, hearing and uh, a lot lately. Um, you'll notice that all these words are noun. I'm doing a little bit of a lesson of English right now. Pandemic, is it a noun or an adjective? And does it have its place as an excluded cause of loss? This is really the big question today. And uh, I'm gonna flip to the next day because all the clients, what matters to them is, I am not producing right now. I am not getting any sales. So I'm hearing about business income insurance or business interruption or loss of income, loss of gross profit, extra expense, loss of rent, time element, et cetera. Every insurance policy can use different uh, ways, but the idea is dollars. And um, yes, most of your insurance policy probably has, uh, includes such a an insurance uh, coverage. But the key is, that it's for insurance a consequence of what happened before. If the basis of insurance is evidence, I'm going back to my sentence, you need to have a permanent direct physical damage to a covered property by a covered cause of loss. And then, and only then, the following additional optional coverage can be triggered, such as business interaction, loss of income, loss profit. We've heard also civil authority, this is also a uh, 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 coverage that you can find in your policy. It's usually restricted by a number of days, by a, a distance 
from your property, thousand feet, a mile, five mile. Um, and there are a few more. But think two seconds about it. Why is it a consequence? Well, if it was not the case, then insurance company, you would call them each time uh, you have an economic downturn or you make a big bad business strategy or you fail to launch a product uh, on the right market, you miss the marketing campaign. All of these reasons would be reason for you to call your insurance company. Bad business is business owner's fault or um, uh, results. And you understand why now business income is built as a consequence of first something that you do not control. Could you have control a pandemic? And again, is pandemic uh, a cause of loss in your policy? That's the question we're gonna keep hearing again and again. But I want to show you the type of um, uh, claim denial letter that we have been receiving uh, as brokers on behalf of our client uh, for the next three, the last three weeks. I took the, uh, the case of an existing Chicago-based restaurants. This is the restaurants that got hit because by civil authority, they were required to close. They did try for a couple of weeks to sell at the door, but today, unfortunately, they decided to close completely because it was not profitable. Look at, this, at the, the deny letter. Our investigation and discussion with you, yes, they got a call, confirmed there were no direct physical damage sustained to your dis described premises or properties, in this case, a restaurant. And because the policy excludes coverage for loss or damage caused by or resulting from any virus, any loss you sustain is not a loss resulting from a covered cause or loss. Therefore, we will be unable to afford coverage for your claim. Clients receive this kind of either denial or what we call reservation of rights again and again and again. Does it mean that you should not report the claim? Well, I'm, I'm pushing to the next section. Look at what I found and you could have hear, heard it too. White House Coronavirus Task Force briefing from Friday. You know the guy who's talking with the, all his respect, President Donald Trump, mentioning that business interruption coverage should be afforded. And he's pointing out to restaurant, 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 restaurator um, uh, for now, but he's claiming that he has never seen the word pandemic uh, mentioned in all the insurance policies being obviously purchased for himself when he was still uh, running his business or maybe um, uh, recently has been put on his desk. So again, what is pandemic? And are we gonna see, like we saw uh, back after the 9-11 um, terrorism attack, Congress acting, enacting an act, the Terrorism Risk Act of 2002, in order to provide a cap loss coverage for all of these businesses, knowing that insurance company can't do it themselves. This, this, the premium they would have to collect from all of you would be too great. So it's a matter of uh, having Congress eventually enacting something. I gave it the name, look, Pandemic, Pandemic Risk Insurance Act of 2020. Why not? But certainly you, we all need to stay tuned on uh, what's gonna happen uh, uh, fairly soon. It's gonna be uh, the end of my, the first party on uh, property. And now I'm gonna shift to the second part, liability. Because again, for the last three weeks, most of the call, if not all the calls, have been about loss of income, business income. Am I gonna get paid by my insurance policy? Now it's shifting and it's shifting to that, to liability, because you start having ripple effect of things that occur. Either the restaurant is closed, but the restaurants, and for, again, for my friend lawyers are there, had contracts. And what, uh, what if you are in breach of your contract today? I promise you a lot of my friend in, uh, lawyers today, they are looking at the act of God clause that for many, many years sometimes, it just, I'm not gonna say copy and pass, but I, here you go, I'm saying it. Um, and they are looking at what words and where the commas were, because certainly it's gonna start to play a lot of game, you know, a lot of uh, action into the, the, the relationship between suppliers and clients. So liability is, uh, for most of you, again, included in your business owner package. It's this part that we call CGL, commercial general liability. It's about the liability towards others that are not your employees, others that come onto your premises, 
think about the UPS guy, think about any contractor coming fix things in your facility uh, and property damage if they break something. But it's also you going out. So you entering others premises and what if you are going with uh, uh, being contaminated and you don't even know? Or what if you are welcoming people in and you don't even know? So these kind of claim definitely are, are starting to ramp up. Uh, also keep in mind, I'm hearing a lot of, uh, of my client trying to do different products. Some of them have been actually required to do face masks uh, by the, uh, I'm talking about Illinois, by the Illinois authority here. So all of those are changes that you need to discuss with your insurance company. If you are insured for one operation and you shift to another, that certainly is some an information you need to share. Next one, directors and officers liability. For all of you who are CEOs, CFOs, executives, or business owners, everything you're gonna choose to do now is gonna potentially have an effect on, your, on, uh, on someone. And certainly the, the path at which you are doing it and the, uh, the range of what you're doing can definitely impact your bottom line. And directors and officers liability insurance is uh, definitely probably not all of you have this kind of insurance, but certainly would be here to protect you if for some reason you're causing a financial loss to a third party, um, such as an investor, lender, supplier, or a client. So go slow, go steady, but think twice about making decision that uh, of the, the, the future repercussion of it. Uh, next, employment practices liability. Yes, we are hearing stories days after days about um, employers who have to lay off, furlough, and there are rules and they are changing uh, quickly. So here, my uh, advice is listen. Listen to the, um, uh, the, the, the professional, the one that uh, I have already advised you and will keep doing that. I'm gonna plug that in two days, there is a webinar on this topic. It called 16 at two o'clock, organized by the French American Chamber of Commerce of uh, Boston in collaboration of uh, Chicago. So again, here, it's key. You need to uh, uh, listen to the specialist and make sure you're doing and taking the step, the proper step to do it properly. Everything needs to be documented and fair. Uh, last one is the cyber liability because there is a lot of change in the, in the workplace. I'm working from home here and guess what? If I had Alexa from Amazon uh, in my kitchen, she would be listening to what I'm saying right now. I don't have it, be, uh, be, be okay with it. But certainly, uh, the cyber um, uh, liability uh, um, policies, and again, some of you may not have this kind of coverage, uh, I've been um, really also um, uh, subject to more and more scrutiny because of the uh, connected object, the new platform that I use. Look at uh, what we are using today, free. If you type on Google Zoom, uh, the, the, the platform we are using, the three words, Zoom data breach you have 11,100,000 uh, results. Now, free has been on the, uh, Zoom has been on the news as being an unsecure platform. And in order for me to, uh, to be with you today, I had to exit my company platform to go back to my personal um, uh, uh, laptop. But these are all problems that were not necessarily in the front line in two, three weeks ago, but are now becoming to be more and more uh, uh, of an issue. Last, I'm gonna to shift to people. And again, as I said, uh, that should probably be the first subject because we can see uh, people suffering all around us and certainly uh, business owners like you having to deal with your own workforce and making decisions. Uh, I highlighted four um, section of uh, insurance that are um, uh, directly uh, linked to people. The first one is workers' compensation insurance. Um, there is definitely a moment that you need also to communicate actively with uh, your insurance companies. They are doing everything they can to, to uh, deal with this, uh, these cases. And um, the law is also gonna uh, have a, a longer evolution about how to deal with uh, COVID. For example, would, would COVID-19 claims should count against your experience modification? You know, in, for those who are involved with the nitty gritty of calculating your workers' compensation insurance premium, there is a uh, factor that is impacting your premium that can be a positive, a credit, or a debit. If you are a machine manufacturer or a machine distributor, like we have today on the, on the call, your job is to uh, build machine, deliver machine, and obviously you can hurt your hand, you can hurt your back. There are expected uh, potential uh, uh, pitfall of the, the type of uh, activity. But is COVID-19 a pandemic 
part of really what you employers have to be prevented for and, uh, and make sure your employees are not getting hurt with. So really, we can see that uh, it's already starting. Kentucky is the first state. We can see that in, in, many, in the next uh, few weeks, um, Department of Insurance of each, each state is gonna probably look at workers' compensation insurance and try to find ways where uh, employers should do the right thing, take care of their employee. And if an employee can prove that he, he got sick uh, at work, like uh, the call I had just before uh, um, plugging myself on, um, there is all evidence that it happens on the work side then obviously the claim should, is legit and should be put through. Uh, now, should the employer be uh, penalized in, this, in the future? Uh, that's the question that is gonna come up. And by the way, none of you are doctors, I think, on the list. So call 911, don't pretend to be one, and report the claim if uh, any employee uh, evidence sickness. Follow CDC's evolving recommendation about how to uh, uh, let employees access your premises and and monitor on a daily basis uh, what's happening. A big, big concerning uh, point right now is uh, some environment, work environment are more difficult than others uh, in order to comply with safe distancing protocol. And we are, we're gonna see that uh, uh, happening in the food industry. Again, if you follow the news, I personally handle a very large poultry processor. It starts to be a problem. And uh, people are really working uh, elbow to elbow, um, cutting meat or packaging meat and it's very difficult for them uh, uh, to, to, to be safe. Plus, this is happening in uh, places of America, a very rural area, where um, sometimes one, two, three generation of the same family works in the same plant. So COVID-19 can run rapidly across an entire family and an entire community. And there is not so many um, uh, replacement worker who wants to go and work in this environment that can be very tough. So we, hopefully I will not see uh, too much of a um, uh, shortening of the food supply, uh, but uh, it's concerning right now. The other point is health insurance. Uh, insurers uh, have been uh, working actively to try to waive prioritization, co-pays, out-of-pocket, anything related to COVID-19 uh, and the testing and the related medical expense. The telemedicine is really expanding dramatically and quickly. So definitely uh, something you need to... Um, uh, seek out from your insurance co companies or brokers, uh, get all the, um, uh, the, the, the new technology, the new uh, help that you can get. It's reassuring for your employee. So this is information that definitely you need to volunteer uh, on a weekly basis almost uh, in order for your employee to feel taken care of and have access to all the new technology. Um, anxiety and stress management uh, consulting is uh, gonna be critical for some. Uh, it is uh, anxiogen, uh, I mean, uh, anxiety is building. Um, it's not always easy to turn off the TV and certainly hearing more and more cases in the community is building the, uh, the issue uh, up. Uh, the um, the uh, question of eligibility in groups, specifically for uh, a large uh, percentage of the French American Chamber member who are small entities where already it was, I know, difficult to create a group in the first place. So now how to keep it uh, is another question when you have to lay off people or furlough of people. Again, insurance companies have been extending the eligibility terms. It's definitely something you need to uh, uh, reach out to your uh, insurer, your broker uh, to keep up to date because it's really updating uh, on a weekly basis. Um, on the question of disability insurance, uh, definitely you just wanted to confirm what it is. Uh, short term, uh, your illness requires medical quarantine. That means you're unable to complete, complete your work. Um, obviously, the, the big question that the disability insurance are starting to put on the table, uh, is it social quarantine or actual medical quarantine? So for now, they are still really um, uh, going, gearing to get medical feedback on, on your situation. But um, uh, there is a lot of pushback on that because again, if you are not yourself hit, but your spouse is, uh, are you just, uh, or, or you, or someone in your building is, um, you no know, doctor is not gonna tell you or give you a piece of paper saying that you have been contaminated. We know there is not enough tests done anyway, but is it the right thing to do for you to stay home? Uh, and all of these questions are treated almost on a daily basis. The final one is life insurance. There is no, nothing that uh, really um, should impact a life insurance policy. My sentence is pretty clear. <laughs> Uh, death is death, and whether you die of a uh, complication with COVID-19 or any other cause, if you had an insurance policy before that, 
uh, it, it should and remain in effect. The real question, and for example, for uh, real estate and uh, loan, is uh, what is the new coverage availability will be? Um, you can expect that one question is going to pop up on questionnaire in the future about COVID-19. Um, and certainly right now, life insurance, life insurer are kind of on, on the uh, pedal on the brake to understand what the ramification uh, of this new uh, pan the pandemic. Um, you know, it's uh, the end of this presentation. I wanted to be just uh, brief on the three sides of insurance uh, that really uh, are involved uh, with, this, uh, with this crisis and give you a little bit of um, uh, tools. So when you discuss with your broker, your insurer, you are going into the right block uh, and uh, using almost the words that I'm putting on this presentation. So it's gonna help with your, uh, uh, your request and getting the right answer. Certainly, and we encourage uh, every client to put a claim through if they have one. And um, back to property, that's difficult to justify, a lot of declination, but I consider it almost like the census. All of us Americans have had to fill out a census lately in order to know who we are and what our needs are in our communities. Definitely, we need something about insurance for a pandemic. And having all the insurer putting two claims and showing with data what are their loss is the best way to get things moving. So again, I recommend that you reach out to your insurance um, specialist and start formulating claims on the, the, the loss of income, the, the property. Expect a denial, expect a uh, uh, coverage uh, declination, but it needs to happen in order for things to move and, uh, and potentially have the law of Congress enact something for all of us. For the other uh, uh, type of uh, risk, whether liability or other people, certainly things are going to also move very quickly, and, and we all need to uh, keep ourselves updated. It's time for questions, and um, certainly I, I enjoy making this presentation for you. Hi, hello, it's Andrea. We don't. Um, there are no questions in the in the chat as of now. So, would you do you want to take questions directly, or would you like to, to ask people to to send them to me, and then I will ask? No, I think the group is uh, is uh, not, not no. big that big. So, if you want just to uh, uh, mention your name and um, sure and, and what industry or, or in what um, uh, what status you are attending this webinar and asking your question, just to give me a little bit of a background in one sentence that would be helpful. Great, we'll just do it that way then. Well, no question. <laughs> Laurent, it's Tom Torelli, can you hear me? I do, Tom, how are you? I am doing just fine, working from home just like you. I have a question, do the stay at home orders from governors have any impact on the ability to uh, put forth a successful insurance claim? So per your question, I'm going to flip back to um, this slide. And what you are referring to is the second bullet on the bottom. It's called civil authority. Mm. Access of covered property prevented by law. And mm. uh, the, the answer is unfortunately in most cases no. Why? Because again, this is a consequential, in, a, in, a, in an insurance policy, it is built as a consequential coverage. First, you need to have a permanent direct physical damage to a covered property by a covered cause of loss. The civil authority removes the covered property portion. And it says that somewhere around you, usually within a certain number of miles, you need to have a building that doesn't need to be yours or a property, can be a bridge, can be something else, can be a, an electrical um, um, a relay that needs to be hit by a covered cause of loss. And, and the law is blocking the street, is blocking the bridge, is blocking the access to the property. But because first there was a covered cause of loss around you, and again, usually oh. within a certain number of miles. So this is one of these consequential uh, coverage. And at this point in time, all the, the response from insurer have been a denial or a reservation of right. This is, I think, the point that is important for insured to participate to the reporting in mass, because obviously it needs, I think this is the part of the insurance policy and where the insurer 
can at least give a little help. Your coverage is usually limited by a number of days, 30 days in most cases, and again, a number of miles, but here it doesn't apply. The entire state of Illinois has been closed out. <coughs> Excuse me. So yeah, I, we certainly encourage clients to put the claim through um, because th this is a fact. I'm taking again the restaurant, for example, uh, they have not been closed because they found um, evidence of COVID-19 in their premises. They have just been closed because the government say you need to. Uh, so again, um, I, think, I think we are expecting that uh, the government, the local authorities, the governor certainly are gonna move forward to try to uh, push insurer to consider paying maybe 30 days or at least per, remove the remove the requirement, the prerequisite uh, that is in most cases built in the policy. So to answer directly your question, Tom, in, the, in my view at this point in time and per the type of policy that are broadly sold, no coverage. But again, we need to all together push for uh, uh, insurer to consider giving something uh, to this matter. And it, in my view, it's actually a, a nice little frame because it has some limitation. So it's not like insurance company, <coughs> excuse me, are gonna have to pay six months or a year of his loss of income. But certainly from a restaurant that is on day one, knows that it has to close, having a, a buffer of 30 days or 60 days, it would limit the insurance company's uh, potential outcome, but really give a, a, a little bit of fresh air to all of these businesses, getting them ready, hopefully, to uh, be back open uh, in May or June or July. That's my answer, Tom. Any other question? Uh, hi, uh, this is uh, Ludovic Valle. Uh, I, it's not related to, to directly to, to the presentation because unfortunately I, I missed most of the presentation. I had trouble connecting in. I, I saw that it's, there is a recorded version of it. I just was wondering how we could get it. Uh, hi, Ludovic, it's Andrea. It will, be, it, it will be on our website either by late today or, or uh, early tomorrow. I'll send you a link. Thank you very much. You get it? Okay. More questions? No, I have a, I have a question. Um, it's Andrea. Do you, do you see anything changing in the insurance business in the future as a result of, of this crisis now? I mean, uh, will there be? Um, yeah, I, I do. Uh, and I'm going back to there. I look at my last sentence on the bottom. Uh, I think uh, Congress in this country, and since we are the French American Chamber of Commerce, I'm gonna mention France, uh, we'll have to uh, um, uh, enact uh, some, um, some stop loss that um, definitely um, will treat the problem of pandemic. Again, there are things in this world like wars or that are, are not insurable. They are not insured and they are not insurable. And the only way uh, for all of us to uh, be, be somewhat put back on our feet after something terrible like, like what happened uh, in New York uh, after the 9-11 uh, um, or what's happening here now all over the country is for the government, which they do. They, they, you've seen like me what uh, the different um, stimulus package that have been voted. There's only countries that can really stop loss, the extent of the loss, financial loss of all these businesses. So um, just to uh, refresh your, all of your memories after September 11, um, terrorism was not covered on September 11. A lot of business downtown New York, Manhattan, uh, lost a lot of money and, and closed and never reopened. A lot of workers uh, didn't get uh, the proper attention, some. Um, so the Terrorism Risk Insurance Act, I'm gonna very summarize quickly, is basically telling insurance company, you have to offer the coverage to every client and they can opt in or opt out like if you want to be insured for uh, the, uh, the window glass or, or if you want to be insured with your 
your nice uh, sound system in your car at the end it's your choice but you have to offer the coverage of terrorism insured can opt in or opt out if they opt in they're going to pay an additional premium and the insurance company are only uh, responsible of the first five million dollar after that congress states you and me paying our tax would be uh, um, taking care of all people that would be uh, touched by a terrorism uh, attack it needs to be the definition of the act by a foreign body but certainly uh, there is the in france something called uh, uh, le fond d'indemnisation des catastrophes naturelles uh, nat uh, natural catastrophe fund basically every insur insured in their homeowner policy in their car policy pay a little bit to it and this is managed by uh, actuaries and again uh, it is mostly uh, climate weather directed so right now in france they are uh, looking at the text and trying to understand if a pandemic can also fit uh, next to a hurricane or a tornado or a large fire uh, uh, in, the, in the mountain uh, to, to take care of, uh, of people but same it, it's only a state that can deal with uh, the extent of uh, a weather, climate, a weather uh, a catastrophe. So I think that's what's going to happen. And we start hearing about it when you look at, uh, uh, at what uh, President Donald Trump just above is alluding to. Uh, pandemic is a new word. It is not in any of your insurance policy, whether saying that it's covered or whether saying that it, it's excluded. But we're going to see a lot of suit, a lot of uh, legal action brought against insurer because this word is not there. And that's great because something needs to happen. And certainly there is nothing better for uh, all of us to know what we buy or what we don't buy. So certainly the more detailed the insurer can be, the better. And uh, I, I expect uh, something done by Congress in order to backlog the insurance company on pandemic. Does anyone else have a have a question? Okay. Um, if not, we can we can conclude and let everybody get back to their uh, their work from home day. Uh, we will Laurent, when we send a follow up email to everybody who was registered for this, we will send your contact information as well. Mm -hmm. um, so, if there are any follow-up questions later on, you can you can uh, you can have a have a have an email exchange with Laurent directly. Sure. But thank, thank you, you for all of you, and um, well, stay in, stay safe. Yes. Enjoy the snow. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Thank you.